Okay, let's look at some multiple choice questions on internal resistance. These are grade 12 questions, but a lot of them contain grade 11 knowledge. They don't actually test the grade 12 internal resistance knowledge. Before we start, let's just remember everything we know about series and parallel connections. First of all, in a series circuit, the current strength is the same everywhere, but the potential difference, remember, potential difference is what we measure as voltage. The potential difference divides in the ratio of the resistors. So this means that the total voltage coming out your voltmeter, which we sometimes also call the EMF, will be divided in a series circuit into this V1, V2, V3. If we add all of these up, they're going to add up to the total voltage that you measure across the batteries okay or the total potential difference and then in a series circuit the more resistors you have the greater the total resistance because the resistors just add up r1 plus r2 plus r3 is going to give you the total resistance so the more resistors you have the greater the resistance so that's the first part we have to remember what goes on in a series circuit okay and now we want to remember what goes on in a parallel circuit. Now remember a parallel circuit, this current that is coming through here has a choice at this point. It can go through R1, R2 or R3 to come back here and get back home to the battery because the current must make a circle. So what happens with the current? We like to say current takes the easiest path. We're not allowed to write this. The proper way to say it is current strength divides in inverse proportion to the resistors. So this means in a parallel circuit, if you've got a big R, you have a small current, okay, in the parallel circuit. Remember in the series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. What is the same everywhere in a parallel circuit? The potential difference, every single voltmeter in the circuit will read the same as the voltmeter across the batteries. And because these circuits are just weird, the more resistors you have, the smaller the resistance. So the more resistors you have, the smaller the resistance. So if we remember all of this, we will be fine with the questions. So let's get started on the questions. So. Three light bulbs, X, Y, and Z, see them over here, X, Y, and Z, with resistances R, so this one's got a resistance R, this one has got a resistance 2R, and this one has a resistance of R. R connected in a circuit is shown below. Well, obviously it's a parallel circuit, and now it says to you the battery has a negligible internal resistance, which means you can do this in grade 11. When the switch S, here's the switch S, is closed, all the bulbs light up and the reading on ammeter A is two and a half amps. Okay, now it says to you which one of the following correctly des describes the reading of the ammeters in amperes when bulb Z burns out. Okay, so at the moment what happens is we've got two and a half amps coming out of this battery and it's being split up between these three resistors. When the electricity comes down here, it gets split up between these three resistors. So now remember, what is going to change if we blow out a light bulb? Well, if we blow out a light bulb, the circuit's gonna to continue to function because um, it's a parallel circuit. But what will happen? Remember, in a parallel circuit, the more resistors you have, the lower the resistance. So the moment we get rid of this light bulb, okay, the total resistance is going to increase. So if the resistance increases, the current is going to decrease, okay? So what we need to do here is we can't be having this answer A or B, okay? Because we've got two and a half amps of current when we have a lower resistance. So we can only have an answer that is gonna be either this one or this one because the current has to decrease the moment we lose 
that um, light bulb Z. Okay, so we're going to get rid of A and get rid of B. If you've got this PDF from me, just watch out. This might be saying A4 if you've got the old version before I fixed it, but it should actually be reading A, which is the resistance on the um, before the current is split up. Okay, so now we're left here. We, we must have C and D, and C and D we also know are correct. The other way we could check that C and D were correct is the moment you burn out this light bulb on the end here, there cannot be any reading on this um, ammeter, so B would have been wrong anyway, okay, because of that. So now we are left with the situation where here in the circuit, this R over here, this is small and this is a big resistance. So what happens in a parallel circuit? In a parallel circuit, current is divided and the most current will go through the smallest resistor because it's in inverse proportion. So we need the answer where there is a big current going through X and a small current going through Y, which is ammeter A1 and ammeter A2. So my answer here has to be D because there's a big current through the small resistor. And by the way, these two add up to this one and a half. They must add up together. Okay, let's look at the next one. The four resistors P, Q, R, and T in the circuit below are identical. The cell has an EMF E and a negligible internal resistance. The switch over here is initially closed. Okay, so this looks a bit confusing. Let's straighten out the circuit. Here's P. The electricity comes out of P and then there's a switch and it can choose to either go through Q or remember over here is a decision point. So the current goes through either Q or R and then it comes back and it ends up going through T and home through the battery. Please excuse my drawing. Okay, so now when the switch is closed, I have series, parallel, series, okay? But when the switch is open, can you see what's going to happen here? It can't go through this section of the circuit, so it's just going to go P, R, T, the current, and then this becomes three resistors in series, okay? So if the switch is opened, what is going to happen at P, R, and T? Okay, so obviously there's no current going through Q. What happens if we are effectively removing this resistance Q? When we open the switch, that's what we're doing. We take this from being parallel to series, so my total resistance of the circuit has going to increase. So if the total resistance increases, then the current is going to decrease. Okay, so the current everywhere in the series part will decrease. So we are looking for an answer where the current that goes through P and the current that goes through T is decreasing. So that gives me A and D. Okay, but now what's going to happen to the current in R? When the switch was closed, remember a parallel circuit is a current divider. So whatever this current was here, it then splits up between Q and R. So R would have got a half of the current when the switch was closed. Now when the switch is open, the current is going to have to increase because it's getting the full measure of current when this is a um, series circuit. So this answer has to be D because this one has to increase when the others decrease. Okay, let's have a look at 1.3 and 1.4. It says here, learners investigate the relationship between the current I and the potential difference V at a constant temperature. So this makes you immediately think of Ohm's law. For three different resistors, X, Y, and Z, they obtain the graphs shown below. 
the resistances of x, y, and z are rx, ry, rz. Which one of the following conclusions regarding the resistance of the resistors is correct? Okay, there is a trap in this question. Remember Ohm's law gives you this formula, r equals v over i. So normally when they give you this question, they use the gradient of the graph, okay? But on this graph, the gradient is dy. Remember, gradient is the change in y over the change in x, which is going to give me i over v, which is not the resistance. This is 1 over the resistance. So in actual fact here, yeah, normally, if it's v over i, the steepest one is the biggest resistance, but in this case, the shallowest one is um, the biggest resistance. Because why? Because it is the inverse of the gradient. So if this has got the smallest gradient, one over a small number gives you a larger number than this one, which is a big gradient. Okay, so the answer is A, RZ has the biggest resistance. All of these equal things have to be wrong. This one is assuming you use Ohm's law um, and you don't check that what's on the axes of the graph. And this one, no, is just nonsense. Okay, so let's look at 1.4 now. When a resistor of resistance R is connected to a battery of EMF E and negligible internal resistance, the power dissipated in the resistor is P. Okay, if the resistor is replaced with a resistor of resistance 2R, without changing the battery, the power dissipated will be. Okay, so now we're working with power. We have to work with one of these formulas here, okay? So normally we use power is volts times amps, the potential difference times the current. But we don't know enough of this. We know something with the resistance. So we're going to use either the I squared R or the V squared over R formula. Now, they said to you, negligible internal resistance, which means E is equal to the total voltage, okay? So now, we've been given information about the voltage, because it says without changing the battery. So, the V is going to remain the same, okay? So, we want to know, if we want to know how much power is dissipated, we're going to use the P equals V squared over R formula. So in situation one, we had P equals V squared over R, okay? Because that's exactly what it is. In situation two, we're going to go P equals V squared. It says to you, don't change the battery, so the EMF and the voltage remains the same, okay? Because there's no internal resistance. But the resistor is now 2R, okay? So what happens here, if this is P, this is now P equals something divided by 2, okay? Because it is V squared over 2R. So we will now end up with, if we take P, P is going to be a half of what it initially was because we are dividing by 2R instead of by R. Okay, let's look at 1.5 and 1.6. In the circuit diagrams below, the cells and resistors are identical. The cells have negligible internal resistance. Well, as you can see, we have a series and a parallel circuit. And we know in a series circuit, if we add, um, we have to add the resistance. So this is going to have a big resistance and this is going to have relatively a smaller resistance. So now it says to you the power dissipated in resistor X is P. So that's this dude over here. The power dissipated in resistor Y is going to be what? Okay, what do we know about these two circuits? We know that the resistors are identical. We can't use this power formula. We can't use this power formula. We want to use one of the power formulas with the resistance. Okay, so what do we know? We know if this circuit, the series circuit, has got a big R, it must have a small 
current. And if this has got a small resistance, it will have a big current, okay? And we know that there's no internal resistance, so this V is going to be constant, okay, for these two cells. So what should we look at here? The current is going to change, but the V is going to remain constant. So let's rather look at power using the V here, okay? If the power is P, the power does is dissipated in resistor V is, let's have a look here. Let's have a quick think, okay. Mm. Okay, so at the end of the day, we know that there's going to be a bigger current in the circuit, okay? So if there's a bigger current and the resistor is the same and we're looking at the power in a single one of these resistors, we can deal, get rid of either of these two where the answer is smaller, okay? Because the answer is always going to be bigger because there's going to be more current, okay? So let's have a look here. Why is it Let's have a look. We need to do some more maths here. Okay, now I know the answers. Um, I know the answers for P here. Okay. But why is this? I knew this a second ago. Oh, okay, I know. Look here. If we put a voltmeter across here, okay, let's just rub some of this out here. Where's my rubber? Okay. If we have a look here at this circuit and at this circuit, okay, if I put a voltmeter here, I know that this voltmeter plus this voltmeter is going to give me the total voltage out of the battery, okay, because in a series circuit, Vt will be equal to V1 plus V2. So this has got a half of the VT, okay? This is a parallel circuit, this will be VT. If I put the resistor on here, this will be, I mean the resistor, sorry. If I put the voltmeter on here, this will measure VT and this will measure VT because in a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same everywhere. In a series circuit, the voltage is divided. So if we use the formula P equals v squared over r, okay? In this situation with x, in the situation with x, the power is going to be a half v all squared over r, and in the situation with y, it's going to be v squared over r. We can call this vt, yes, if we really want to. Okay, so a half squared becomes a quarter v squared over r, and this is v squared over r. So a quarter, the mathematical relationship between a quarter v squared and v squared, this one in y is four times bigger, okay? Which means the power must be four times bigger. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. A series circuit is a voltage divider. So the total EMF coming out the battery in the series circuit is split in half, but in this parallel circuit, the voltage is the same everywhere. And as a result of that, if you use the power equals V squared over R formula, you find that the power in this resistor is four times bigger. Okay, 1.6, which one of the graphs below represents the relationship between potential difference and current for an ohmic conductor? So remember here, we're going to use Ohm's law, okay, which the relationship between the voltage and the current is the resistance. So remember, for uh, 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 ohmic conductor, we will always end up with a straight line graph at a constant temperature. And as you increase, um, 
you, the, the resistance in these graphs is shown by the gradient of the graph. So we need a graph with a constant gradient. The answer here is B. Gosh, I'm not as switched on today as I sometimes am, but we will get there. Okay, now look sharp here. We've got 1.8 and 1.11. So if you're following with your questions in your um, PDF, remember that 1.8 and 1.11 are now here, not 1.8 and 1.9. It says a certain conductor obeys Ohm's law. So know your definitions. In Ohm's law, the potential difference across a conductor is directly proportional to the current in the conductor at a constant temperature. Okay, so what is going to happen to the resistance of a conductor? So if we obey Ohm's law, we need to know anything with a constant temperature. Okay, so now this one D has got a temperature changing. So we are going to ignore answer D because we can only talk about ohmic conductors at a constant temperature. So we're left with A, B, and C. So the resistance across a conductor is directly proportional to the conductor, the current in the conductor at a constant temperature. Remember we plotted this as the graph in the last question. So R equals V over I, and we end up with the straight line graph. So what happens to the resistance? This is what this question is talking about. It is talking about the resistance. The answer is C, okay? Because as the volts increases or the current changes at a constant temperature, the resistance is the same. That's what Ohm's law means. Yes, Ohm's law is telling you about the resistance of a conductor. So, Two resistors of equal resistance are connected in series to a battery with negligible internal resistance. The current through the battery is I. So let's draw this. So here is my resistor R. Okay. And they are connected in series. And then we are putting this much current through the battery. Okay. Then it says to you, we're going to connect them in parallel. So here are my two resistors in parallel. And here is my ammeter and here is my battery. Okay, what happens in a series circuit? If I add two resistors in series, the resistance increases. If I add two resistors in parallel, the total resistance decreases. If the resistance decreases, the current increases. If the resistance increases, the current decreases. Remember, it is an inversely proportional relationship. So what is going to happen when we connect these in parallel? Is the current going to go up or is the current going to stay the same or is it going to go down? Well, the moral of the story is the current is going to go up because the resistance has decreased. So we can immediately get rid of A and B because the moment we put two resistors in parallel, the resistance decreases and the current increases. So we are left with these two options here, 2I and 4I. Now the best way I can use to explain this, okay? So we're using the same battery, okay? So the voltage is going to remain the same. If we have a look here, is it going to be twice the current or four times the current? The answer is four times the current. And I don't have an easy explanation for this, okay? But what I can do is if you work out mathematically, if you're unsure with a question like this, okay, you can work it out mathematically by drawing the circuit with um, resistors in that have any number on it. So long as you follow the rules of the question here and the rules of the question here say that they have got equal resistance. So as long as you use any two equal numbers, you're fine. So the total resistance over here is one plus one is two. The total resistance here is one over one plus one over one, which is 
Okay, remember 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 for a parallel circuit. So this one, let me show you the maths. Okay, so 1 over RT equals 1 plus 1. 1 over RT equals 2, which means RT equals a half. Okay, so if you have a look here, this total resistance for the series circuit is 2 ohms and this total resistance is a half an ohm. Okay, so 2 is 4 times bigger than a half. If I go a half times 4, I will end up with 2. Okay, so this resistance here is 4 times smaller okay, than the resistance in the um, other circuit, which means the current will be four times bigger. If you don't think this proves this, go do this with two ohm resistors, okay? Two plus two is going to give you an RT of four. One over two plus one over two gives you, I should do this in another color pen. Let's just put this pen here. Let's just circle these. If I do it with two and two, I'll get a total resistance of 4 if I do it with 2 and 2. 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2, a half plus a half gives me 1. The inverse of 1 is 1, so my total resistance here is 1. So you can see mathematically this is 4 times bigger. So in the series circuit, the total resistance is 4 times bigger. You can go do this again with 3 ohms, but no matter what resistors you put in, as long as you obey the fact that they have got equal resistance and you connect them in series and parallel, you'll find that the resistance is always 4 times bigger in series than in parallel, which means that when you put the resistance um, in parallel, the total resistance decreases by a factor of four, so the current is going to have to increase by a factor of four. I don't know which other way to show you, but this is mathematically the relationship, and this is how I worked it out, by checking with different resistors of equal resistance drawing the circuit. Okay, so the answer is D. Okay, let's go back to 1.7. Remember, we did a little bit of a jump there. Okay, here we go. Circuit I shows two identical lamps X and Y connected to a cell of negligible internal resistance. Switch S is closed. A wire T, check this wire over here, of negligible resistance is now connected across X in circuit 2. Okay, by putting this wire here, what have we done? We have made a decision point for the current. So we have effectively turned this into a small parallel circuit, okay? But now they're telling you this wire T has got L-zip resistance. It says it is negligible. So what happens when you make a, uh, a parallel circuit and one of the things has got zero resistance? All the current is going to go through here. We have made a short circuit, basically. Okay, so in this circuit, the moment the circuit is running, this whole light bulb X is going to be ignored by the current because it's too much like hard work. The current will always flow through the easiest path, the smallest resistor. So what is going to happen to light bulb X? It is not going to light up. Okay, there's no ways it's going to glow brighter because what's happened we have made a short circuit, okay? So X is not going to light up. What is going to happen to Y? Well, what did we do here? We had a total resistance, okay, is here X plus Y, and now in this circuit, my total resistance is just Y. So what has happened? We have put a short circuit, we have decreased the total resistance, Okay, and if you decrease the total resistance, what happens? The current is going to increase. And then what's, what do we do for brightness? Brightness is related to power, and power equals I squared R. My I just got bigger, my R stayed the same. So if the I gets bigger, the light bulb is going to glow brighter. 
So we should end up with the answer D, X does not light up and Y glows brighter. Okay, now we are on 1.9. In the circuit below, the battery has an EMF E and an internal resistance R. With switch S open, readings are registered on the ammeter and the voltmeter. Okay, so let's just have a look here. Here's my battery. Here's my little R resistance. I'm just straightening out the circuit. It's coming out here. It's going through an ammeter. And then here's my switch S. Wait, there's a decision point before switch S. So we can either go through R or we can go through the switch and go through the R and then both of these will meet up and go back home to the battery. Okay, so when the switch is open, what do we have here? We only have my little internal resistor and this resistor R. We basically have a series circuit with one resistor when the switch is open. Okay, when we close the switch, we end up, so this is series when it's like this. When we close the switch, we end up with these two R's in parallel now with my little resistor, little R by the battery, okay? So when the switch is closed, what is going to happen to the ammeter and the voltmeter? Well, in this series circuit and in this parallel circuit, how would we describe the total resistance? This has got a big R and this has got a small R in comparison. Remember, the moment you add a resistor in a parallel circuit, the resistance is going to decrease. So if this has got a big R, it is going to have a small current because they are inversely proportional and this is going to have a big current, okay? So what happens here when we close the switch what is going to happen to the ammeter reading? We need an answer with it increasing. Okay, so let's get rid of C and D because we want the ammeter reading to decrease. Now, what is going to happen to the voltmeter reading? Well, this voltmeter reading, you can see the voltmeter is um, in parallel. So what has happened here? Remember, the EMF E has to be constant. It's the total energy that the battery can supply. Okay, and then this E gets split up into the internal volts and the external volts. Okay, so what have we done now? How many lost volts? Remember, these are often called the lost volts. Okay, what has happened if we increase the current? If we increase the current, we are actually going to increase the lost volts because remember they I little r. So what is going to happen here? The voltmeter reading is going to decrease because we have increased this amount of lost volts in the circuit. So we can actually just supply less. So because the current went up, the internal resistance remained the same. This IR is the lost volts, it's increased, so this reading on the voltmeter has um, decreased because this got bigger the moment we made the circuit parallel. Alrighty, here we have another circuit here. And can you see, just by looking at the circuit here, if you were a little bit of electricity coming out the battery, you could easily flow around here, around here, around here, and check at this decision point here, you can actually go straight through R1 and back to the battery. So regardless of the fact that this switch S is open, you actually have um, current running through the circuit at this very moment with the switch open because that switch is in parallel with that resistor R. So let's have a look at what it is saying here. A battery of EMF E and negligible internal resistance is connected in a circuit as shown below. The resistances of R1 and R2 are high. Which one of the following combinations about the ammeter readings 
will be correct when switch S is open and when switch S is closed. Okay, so at the moment switch S is open. So the current is going through R2 and it's going through R1. So then the total resistance is going to be R1 plus R2. So this is when it is open. What happens if I close the switch? Look here, if I close the switch, it says to you that this has got a high resistance. Now what happens if we close the switch when the current gets here? You can either choose to go through the closed switch or it can go through the resistor. But this is a big resistance. So when we close the switch, we are actually making a short circuit. Almost no current is going to flow through R1. So then RT is just going to be R2 because R1 is basically cut off when the switch is closed. So when the switch is open, this is large. And when the switch is closed, the total resistance is small. Okay, so if we have a large resistance, then we will have a small current. And if we have a small resistance, we will have a big current, okay, which is related to the ammeter reading. But is this what the question actually asked? Which one of the following combinations about the ammeter readings will be correct when switch S is open and when switch S is closed? So when the switch is open, we are reading the current in both R1 and R2. So we can get rid of this. Because remember, when the switch is open, then it is basically a series circuit. So it's got to be C or D. What happens when the switch is closed? It can't be this one. We are only going to read R2 because of the short circuit. It will not go through R1, short circuit. So the answer here has to be D. Okay, remember 1.11's on with 1.8, so we're going to 1.12. Now, I think this question is February, March 2014, which means it's when the exam guidelines change, because this question refers to what happens to the potential difference across a capacitor. And now, last I recall, capacitors are mostly only in grade 9 technology. So what is a capacitor? It is a device to store charge. Okay, so as you charge it, it builds up charge. So it can't be this one because it starts from zero and builds up charge. And it can't be this one unless it's discharging. So we're left with these two graphs, which show an increasing potential difference in the capacitor as it charges. But it is this one here, B, because it doesn't charge linearly. At first, it builds up a lot of charge. And then it gets, it's like, it's kind of like stuffing a duffel bag with clothes. You can, at the beginning, it's really easy to put the clothes in fast, but as it gets fuller and fuller and fuller, there's less space. So it kind of works like that. The answer is B, but I'm not sure that this is relevant to you because I don't think capacitors are in the uh, exam guidelines anymore. In fact, I know they aren't. Okay, 1.13, three identical light bulbs are connected and a circuit is shown below. The resistance of the batteries and the connecting wires can be ignored. Well, I don't know about you, but this circuit looks awful confusing to me. So I'm going to try and straighten it out. Here's the battery. And here I come out the battery here. And then I get to this decision point over here. So let's draw this. I come out the battery and then I come to a decision point. If I go this way, I am going to hit this light bulb, by the way, I'm ignoring the voltmeter for the moment. And then this is going to take me back home to the battery via the switch. Okay, so that's what's going on there. If I leave the battery and I come to this decision point and I keep going, I hit this. Yes, and then I keep going. Okay, this is a voltmeter. I'm going to ignore it. But I come here and I reach this other light bulb over here. And then I go back 
through my decision point, back through the switch and back to the battery. So what have I actually got here if I ignore the um, measuring instruments, the voltmeters, I've got the one light bulb that is in parallel with two light bulbs. Now, okay, now let me have a look here. Where is this voltmeter? Look at this voltmeter here. If I go from this decision point to here, where is this voltmeter? This voltmeter is basically measuring this light bulb, okay? Where is the other voltmeter? Look here, between these two is where this voltmeter is coming off. So this second voltmeter, V2, is only on this light bulb. Well, now to me, this is a lot more logical than the way they laid the circuit out to try and confuse you. And obviously here is switch S. Okay, so which one of the following statements is correct when the switch is closed? So we're just completing the circuit if we close the switch. The reading on V1, okay, is half that on V2 equal twice three times. Okay, let's have a look here. What is happening here? If these are identical light bulbs, in this top branch the resistance will be R and in this bottom branch it will be 2R, okay? So the bottom branch has got a bigger resistance than the top branch. So one thing here is I know that parallel circuits, it says to you that the voltage everywhere is the same in a parallel circuit, but have a look here. This branch is actually a series circuit. So if I put a voltmeter here, okay, across both of the light bulbs, this reading here would be equal to that reading there. But because this bottom half is a series circuit, this voltmeter reading V2 over here, V2 is in a series circuit, the voltage is divided. So V2 is going to be a half of V1. So the, uh, uh, yeah, because look here, if I put this voltmeter here, this voltmeter and this voltmeter give me that voltmeter, which is the same as the top voltmeter. So this reading on voltmeter is going to have half the reading on V1. But that's not what the question says. It says, what is the reading on V1? I found the reading on V2. So if V2 is a half V1 by algebra, if I want V1 by itself, this is multiplying by a half. So we're going to divide by a half. 2 V2 equals V1. So the reading on V1 is equal to twice that on V2. If you are confused, go and do algebra with this statement here. Okay, and you will soon see why that the reading on V1 is twice that on V2. Don't let your algebra confuse you with the logic of the resistors in the question. Okay, the minimum value of the resistance that can be obtained by connecting two 4 ohm resistors is... Well, how do we decrease resistors, um, total resistance? We have to put them in parallel. So I will have two resistors of 4 ohms in parallel. So 1 over RT will be equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, which is 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, which gives you 2 over 4 is 1 over RT. So to get the answer, RT is 4 over 2. So the answer, 4 over 2, is 2 ohms. Just use your formulas to help you. In the circuit diagram below, the resistance of R1 is twice the resistance of R2. So this is R2, and this is 2 times R2. So in my mind, this one is big. And this one is small. In the circuit diagram below, the resistance of R1 is twice the resistance of R2. Okay, so this is correct. This is the big R, and this is the small R. 
The two resistors are connected in series and identical voltmeters are connected across each resistor. The readings on the voltmeters are... Which one of the following statements is correct? Okay, this is a series circuit. A series circuit is a potential divider. The potential is divided in the ratio of the resistors. Okay, so before we go any further, R1 has going to have, it is the big resistance, so it is going to have the big voltmeter reading. Okay, and R2 is going to have the small voltmeter reading. So we need to check here, which is V1, V2. So we know that V1 must be bigger than V2. Let's get rid of any answers where V1 is smaller than V2. V1 is a half of V2. This one is wrong because it is smaller. V1 is a quarter of V2. This one can't be correct. Okay. 2V1. This one also can't be correct because this one is a big number on that side and a small number on the other side. The answer has to be A. Okay. V1 has to be bigger than V2. So look, check this with numbers if you're not, if you're confused. If V2 equals 2, okay, if V2 equals 2, then V1 equals 4. Does that make V1 bigger than V2? Yes. Okay, check it. If V2 equals V2, if you checked it with B, then you would end up with a smaller number for V1. Just when you're confused with these mathematical relationships here, that they put these things here, if you can do the logic that you know that V1 has got a bigger voltage than V2, okay, based on the resistances. If you can do that, and then you look at the answers and you're not sure of the algebra, just go put any number in for V1 or V2, okay, and then check which one the mathematical relationship works for here. The answer is A, but if you don't understand why, go put pr one pretend number in and check the mathematical relationship fits V1 is greater than V2. We are nearly at the end here. I think we only have two more questions. Okay, four identical light bulbs, P, Q, R, and S are connected in a circuit below. The cell has a negligible internal resistance. Well, I don't like this circuit. I'm going to straighten the circuit out. Let's come out the battery and go over here. So here's my battery. We come out the battery. We hit P. Okay, then we come out of P and we have a decision point. And if we go up, we're going to go to S. Can you see here? and then come out of S. And if we go here, we are going to go through Q, and then we're going to come back to the decision point, and then here is R, and then we'll go back to my battery. Okay, so there, there we go, we've straightened the circuit out. Which one of the following statements about the brightness of P, Q, R, and S is correct? Okay, so to look at the brightness, we have to look at the power. Okay, so let's have a look here. What is the same in all of these light bulbs? They are identical. They have the same R. So what do we need to look at here? Well, if we have a look at this circuit, okay, if we have a look at this parallel part here, then the current is going to be split here, okay? Whatever current is coming out of P will go through R. So this I and this I are going to be the same, but this I is going to be split, okay? So this one is going to get I over 2, and this one is going to get I over 2. It's going to get half of the current because a parallel circuit is a current divider. 
So if you've got half of the current and P equals I squared R, P and R should glow with the same brightness, okay? Is there anybody, all bulbs burn with the same brightness? Let's get rid of that immediately because they can't do that because of the parallel circuit part. P burns brighter than R, let's get rid of that. P and R are both the series parts, they're gonna have the same current flowing through them. S and Q burn brighter. No, they can't burn brighter because they've got half the current that leaves us with C, P and R, the series parts, burn brighter than S and Q. This is correct, the answer is C. Because power equals I squared R, this one is getting I, P gets I, R gets I, and then S and Q, these two, the current is split, they only get half the current, so they're gonna glow half as brightly. So P and R are burning brighter than S and Q. And then finally, we come to, this must be the 2020 question. In the circuit below, the battery has an internal resistance R and an EMF of E. A variable, in, a variable resistor R is connected across the circuit. What color pen shall we use here? A variable resistor R is connected in the circuit. He has the variable resistor R and the ammeter voltmeter readings register. The resistance of the variable resistance R is increased. Well, if R goes up, then I goes down because the resistance and the current are inversely proportional. Which one of the following combinations is the correct representation in the change in the reading on the ammeter? and the voltmeter. Okay, well if the R increases in a series circuit, the V is going to increase across this voltmeter. So what happens to the voltmeter reading? This voltmeter reading should be increasing, but the ammeter reading should be decreasing. I think the answer is A. Okay, we can definitely, definitely get rid of these two with the ammeter reading increasing. The ammeter reading cannot increase if you increase the resistance. The ammeter reading always has to decrease because it's inversely proportional. Why does the voltmeter reading not decrease? Well, there's only these resistors in the circuit, yes? And a series circuit is a voltage divider. You can also use this. E equals V internal plus V external. Yes. So if the current if the current increases, and this is I little r plus I big R, yes. So we've just agreed we increased the external resistance and then the current dropped. So if the current dropped then this value here is going to decrease. The EMF is constant. So if this decreases, this must increase. So the answer is A. The battery supplies a constant EMF. If the current decreases, the total value of the lost volts, the internal voltage is going to decrease, which means the value of the external voltage must increase and that is the last question.